next on Betsy's Kindergarten Adventures. We can have a sleepover. I'm afraid to go out in the yard at night. It looks like you have a loose tooth, Betsy. There must be some way to get that tooth out. Too. And the planets that go around it, like our planet Earth. We got to know them up close and personal. Maybe a bit too close if you ask me. And now, presenting that big, hot ball of fire that shines down on our planet and keeps us warm, let's hear it for the star of our show, the sun. And I had a good idea just how hot the sun was in this stuffy costume. Okay, Kenji, which planet are you? I'm the one called Mercury that's closest to the sun. And the next closest planet is? I am Venus. I was named after the goddess of love. And next is that out of this world planet, our very own planet, Earth. I am Earth, the third planet from the sun. I am the planet that's so much fun, because out of all the planets, I'm the only one that's got air and ocean and trees and sun and mountains and rivers and chewing gum. And now, it's time to introduce the red planet, the one we call Mars. Ah! I'm a mud marsher from the planet Mars! Take me to your leader! Okay, now where's Jupiter? I'm coming, Mrs. O'Connor. Excellent, Scotty. And what can you tell us about Jupiter? Well, it's the biggest, it's the heaviest, it has 12 moons. Very good. And next we have... Saturn, the planet with the rings. Saturn has seven moons. And the rest of the planets are... Neptune and Uranus. Okay, my little planets. Now all of you move in a circle around the sun. It's what we call an orbit. Hey, watch it, mud boy. You're getting in my orbit. Okay, my little heavenly bodies. School's out for the weekend. But I promise we will all go to the observatory very soon and look at the real planets through the big telescope. Oh, I don't want to wait to look through the big telescope. I want to go camping at night and look at the gazillions of stars in the sky. Ew! You're weird! But aren't there bears out there? Yeah, and big shadowy trees and things that go creak in the night. Sounds like my backyard. Hey, that's a great idea, Betsy. We can have a sleepover. But I don't think... Uh, you mean sleep outside at night with the bugs? Where it's dark? It probably isn't such a good idea. You guys aren't afraid, are you? Me? <laughs> what makes you think that? I'm not afraid of anything. Why, I don't even use a nightlight. Afraid? Of my own backyard? How silly. Yes? Yes. It's fine with me to have your friends stay over. Isn't that what you wanted me to say? Uh, oh, yes. Sure. Is there something you're not telling me, Betsy? Okay. I confess. I'm afraid to go out in the yard at night. Oh, that. You'll be fine, dear. It's a warm summer night, and you'll have all your friends to keep you company. I don't know, Mom. 
I've never been out there without you or Dad. What was I afraid of? It was my yard. I've played out there a million times. But there was something about the real thing that gave me the shivers. Mom! She's back with the kids! Okay, where's the campground? I'm ready to catch the big one. There are no lakes or rivers in my backyard. Sorry, Billy. Who needs a lake? I'm going puddle fishing for night crawlers. Not around me, you're not. Wow, Molly. You brought everything but your bed. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't fit through my bedroom door. You know, this is a nice, comfy room. Maybe we could sleep in here instead? What's that sound? Do you mean the clickety-clickety sound or the crocket-crocket sound? <laughs> Whatever! If I measured right, then pool A should go here and pool B over here. I also brought insect repellent. What does he do? Oh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Hello. He makes me feel more brave because he's a bigger chicken than I am. Huh? My rubber chicken. He's gone. I can't fall asleep without him. Don't panic, Scotty. We'll search the yard and find him. We'll go this way. I'll go that way. Let's check in the tent. No, wait, it's not in. That was all your fault, Maria, not me. Wow, this is no time to be hanging out in a tent, children, when the sky is filled with stars. Did you know there are groups of stars called constellations, and people give them names like the Big Dipper because it looks like a big soup ladle? The Dipper! I see it! I see one. I'll call it the Big Slippers. I found one, too. I'm gonna name it Soccer Stars. I see one. It's a creepy crawly constellation. I see it too. A giant star spider watching over us while we're sleeping. Waiting to trap us in its sticky web. No! I hate spiders! Where is Chicken Little when I need him? I think maybe it's time to go to bed. Then, before you know it, the sun will come up and it'll be morning. <sighs> I just keep wondering what happened to Chicken Little. You need to go to sleep, Scotty. Gee, I'd like to, but my mom always tucks me in first and tells me a bedtime story. Ooh, a bedtime story? We'll tell you one. Yeah, it's a scary story of a terrible monster that roamed the night. Monster! Are you sure this is a bedtime story? Oh, yes. It's called The Legend of the Big Red. Rooster! Ow! It's only a rooster! Big deal! Ah, but Big Red wasn't just any rooster. He was six feet tall with big, beady red eyes and a really sharp beak. And nobody liked him because he always went cock-a-doodle-doo in the morning and woke everybody up way too early. And the people threw stuff at Big Red and called him names. And that made him mad. And so one day, he refused to crawl. Right. And because he didn't crawl, the sun didn't come up the next morning. And now they say Big Red's ghost haunts the land. And, and just when you're trying to sleep, he will sneak up on you in the middle of the night and go cock-a-doodle! going, Molly? I, uh, just remembered that I forgot to tuck in my dolls. But you'll miss the sunrise. My mother drove Molly home. She was the first to call it quits. 
but she wouldn't be the last. <gasps> my soccer ball! Somebody took my soccer ball! Don't worry, we'll find it. Okay, the tent is the sun, and you're all planets orbiting around it. This way we'll cover all of the yard. I still can't no, find your I ball. Can't see it everywhere. Keep looking, I'm sure it's just... Uh, it's okay. I have extra batteries in the tent. What was that? Great! I just remembered, I got another light! <laughs> you use a night light? Only where the moon isn't out. It's probably just the wind in the trees. Besides, whatever it is, we've got it outnumbered. Big Red Rooster! Ah! Wait! Don't leave me all alone! Thanks for sticking it out, Scotty. That was very brave of you. Scotty? My mom took everyone home but Scotty. I can't really blame them for going. They found out the hard way just how scary my backyard really is. Are you sure everything is okay out there, Betsy? Everything's fine, Mom. No problems at all. But I knew if I tried to make a run for it, whatever was out there would get me. But at least I had company. First Chicken Little, then the soccer ball. What if we're next? What if the Big Red Rooster is coming to get us? I was scared too, but Scotty needed my help. You're really smart. You know there's no such thing as a six-foot rooster. You're right. And according to the Book of 5,000 Fabulous Facts, roosters sleep at night and only crow after the sun comes up. And besides, we're safe in the tent. And look up at those twinkling stars, the ones that are brightest. I bet they're the planets like Mrs. O taught us. They're brighter because the planets are closer to us than the stars. I wonder if that one is Mars or Venus. Well, it says in my book that the bright star near the moon is Venus. Now, aren't you feeling better? Yes. <gasps> it's coming. Something was out there. I didn't know what to do. Okay, whatever you are, this is my backyard. Now, scram! Shoo! G go away! All right, Mr. Rooster, come out this minute. You're the rooster? You bad dog. You buried Zara's soccer ball and Scotty's rubber chicken. Wow! The sunrise! Isn't it wonderful, Scotty? Wasn't it worth waiting for? The sun felt so warm, but the best feeling of all was knowing that I'd conquered my fear and no big red rooster would ever keep me from seeing the sunrise. <laughs> field trips are a fun way to learn about all sorts of different things, but when going on a field trip, always remember to... Stick together! That's right! But if you do happen to get lost, one of the most important things you can do is to ask a grown-up in uniform, like this security guard. Then just stay right where you are. That makes it easier for us to come and find you. We promise we'll never take off without telling anyone where we're going ever again. Today when I woke up, my mouth felt very strange. And that made me worried.
Betsy, what on earth are you doing? Mommy, I think there's something wrong with one of my teeth. It's all wobbly. It looks like you have a loose tooth, Betsy. Oh, no! Don't worry, that's a good thing. It means you're growing up and getting your grown-up teeth. <laughs> What's the matter with Kevin? I'll show you. <laughs> Just like you're getting your first grown-up tooth, Kevin is starting to get his first baby tooth. <laughs> grown-up teeth? Baby teeth? I thought teeth were just... teeth. Betsy, the tooth will come out on its own. Stop making faces. Does my tooth have to come out? Of course it does. It's all part of growing up. Good morning. Betsy? I know I just dry your dog. Uh, is anything wrong, Betsy? No, nothing's wrong. I didn't know if I'd be able to think about school today. The only thing I could think about was my poor little loose tooth. Did you know that sharks lose and grow back lots of new teeth every week? A shark grows more than 20,000 teeth in a lifetime. Wow! That's so cool! Yeah. That's unbelievable! Betsy, know what? Scott lost a baby tooth last night. And I lost one yesterday. Did you lose any teeth yet, Betsy? No, not yet. But I do have a loose one. You, you do? do? Cool! Wow. That's awesome, Betsy! Wiggle it again! Go! Your tooth is so loose, I think it could come out at any time! Okay, everyone, we need to sit down now. Well, it looks like we have a new member of the Loose Tooth Club. So what I've done is I've placed this special tooth chart on our bulletin board. Everyone who loses a baby tooth can come up here and use my special purple pen to write their name on the big paper tooth. Oh, 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 Mrs. O'Connor! I lost a tooth last week! Well then, Billy, I guess you could be our first name on the tooth chart. Woo! Anyone else? Then all of you may get into line behind Billy and sign the tooth chart. This was exciting! I couldn't wait to be able to put my name on the tooth chart, too. It's funny, but a little while ago, I didn't want my baby tooth to leave. Now I wanted it gone. Our teeth are very important, not only for eating, but for talking, too. Your tongue, lips, and teeth all help you form sounds. Say the word tooth slowly. And notice how your tongue first hits the inside of your front top teeth to produce the hard T sound. Very good. Now notice how your tongue goes between your upper and lower teeth to make the th sound. Very good. Our teeth are very important. 
and that's why we should always take good care of them by brushing after meals, not eating too many sugary treats, and seeing our dentist twice a year. I kept wiggling that wobbly little tooth with my tongue, but it didn't seem to be getting any looser. I wanted to put my name on that tooth chart. And this silly tooth wasn't helping me. Is the tooth any looser, Betsy? There must be some way to get that tooth out. I have an idea. I could build a tower with a mechanical pulley system. Uh, what? A tower with a mechanical pulley system. First, we tie some string around your loose tooth. Then we attach the other end to a pulley. Hmm. We'll need some kind of an engine. I was thinking... a remote-controlled car. Now, wait a second. No, not enough power to pull a tooth. We need two remote-controlled cars. And the wind up mechanical doggy. She's right! Thank you, Billy. For one thing, it would take way too long to build a tower. What? You need something a little more athletic. Athletic? Sure, we could tie some string around your tooth and then tie the other end around a... soccer ball. What? That sounds great. Count me in. We're all on the soccer field. I kick the ball to Scott. And I kick it to Sarah. I race down the field at full speed, dodging all the other players. Betsy's right behind me. I reach the goal and then... idea either. Lunch time is almost over, so be sure to finish your milk. Dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt build strong, healthy teeth. Milk? How can milk make your teeth stronger? Milk contains calcium. That's a mineral that builds healthy bones and teeth so that you can do everything from standing up straight to scoring the winning goal. Mmm, good apple. Thanks for all the great ideas, everyone. But I think I'll wait for the tooth to come out on its own. Why is everyone smiling? Wiggle your tooth, Betsy! <gasps> it's gone! My wobbly baby tooth is gone! But... Where did it go? There it is. In your apple.
bedtime, Betsy. Okay, Mom. Did you brush your teeth? I sure did, because brushing your teeth helps keep them healthy and strong. That's right. for you to go downstairs. Good girl, Gracie. <laughs> I thought losing my baby tooth was going to be awful. <laughs> 